Well, it's day one of 2024. We've finished 2023. It was an extraordinary year globally. There was so many things changed in the global landscape, and it made me think a lot. It made me think a lot every day about the challenges of life, what's happening with the world, where we're going in the world. <clears throat> and one of the things that has been on my mind a lot lately is the dangers of the world, the new dangers of the world. Myself, a father, two daughters, two sons, and I worry for them. I worry for the the innocent in general. I think there's so much more deception and distraction these days, and it's part of the reason I felt compelled to make this video just before Christmas. Had a very long trip to have a great Christmas with the family, and I listened to one of the recent Joe Rogan podcasts, and he was interviewing these two gentlemen from, or that had created, I think it's a film called The AI Dilemma. I haven't watched it yet, but it was a nearly three-hour discussion on the challenges of AI, and we've obviously seen a huge leap in AI technology in the last 12 months. It was just at Christmas last year, I, I recall, jumping on the chat GPT for the first time, thinking, wow, this is incredible. And then we've had the advances of the the, the imagery that can be created with AI, the, the music, and, and everything that comes along with it. And one of the challenges that they spoke about <clears throat> in this interview was a recent example where Snapchat had rolled out an AI bot too quickly. And what had happened, there was an example of a 13-year-old girl that had been given advice about how to have sex for the first time with a 30-something-year-old man through this AI bot. And it presented a lot of challenges around how amoral, I don't know if amoral is the right word, but there's, there's no morality in AI. It, if you can inter, if you can interface with it properly, it'll just keep giving you answers. It'll keep feeding you information. And so that was one of the real challenges that's out there. And <clears throat> and from that, they talked about how a whole range of other social media platforms pulled that were just about to pull the trigger on their own AI bots, chatbots stopped because that problem had to be resolved. And that's a real worry for me. That's a real worry. Snapchat in general, I've I've never liked it. I've you know, we've you've probably heard of this the the TikTok phenomenon of just doing this. It's this constant dopamine hit. And they talk about it in this interview about how social media was purely designed for engagement, to keep you on the platform. And how and they talked about how how different the world may have been if AI had been designed to do something different other than that which it could have it, it could have uh, it could have been designed that way <clears throat> so this this tiktok effect it's just scroll flick 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 it's it's this constant dopamine hit that we get and in my opinion and in a lot of people's opinions it happens anyway is that for young children for adolescents that's not good you you just you're never bored where where has boredom gone these days? There is no boredom. There's no ability to be bored because being bored is important. Being bored is where ideas, ideas come from. Being bored is where creativity really stems. If you're never bored, if you're always entertained, you just you, you remove that opportunity for that to occur, which is innately part of our humanity we're, we're losing that part of our humanity this con and you know five minutes is probably not a bad thing half an hour is yeah getting worse but this constant need for the hit the hit the hit the hit the hit we see it with with gambling we see it with poker machines hit 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 this constant hit on our of dopamine on our on our brains <clears throat> So that's TikTok. Snapchat, I find, is at another level. It it brings in this this false sense of connection and, and validates this this almost in some sense it's real, but in a lot of sense it's this false human connection that we have. TikTok is just flick, 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 
I get the the dopamine hit because it's exciting. I'm entertained, educated, whatever, and entertained or educated. Whereas Snapchat is different. You you've got this false sense of connection with someone. You see it with with streaks. It's this constant connection that's not really a connection. It's not a human connection. I remember many years ago sitting there at the football, and there was a young fellow in front of me. It must have been 13, 14, it's probably 14, 15, 16. And I noticed he spent more time looking at his phone, which, you know, a lot of teenagers do. But he spent the whole time on Snapchat. Just refresh, 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 refresh. There was that dopamine hit. Waiting, 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 waiting for someone to contact me. So how do you how do you get that connection? If no one's connecting with you, if no one's sending you that message, if no one's sending you a snap, how do you increase the the, the number of hits you're going to get? We go out and connect more, with more people. You go out and make more false connections with people that you don't really need a connection with, that you don't, really don't want a connection with, but you want the feeling of a connection. It's It's this idea of a connection ahead of having an actual connection. And that's that's one of the scariest things for me as a parent, this false sense of connection, the validation through people that shouldn't be validating you. And it's there's, there's part of us as a human being, I think, that is quite attracted to that. You know, you can sit there and put it down to bad parenting or whatever, but you can be a great parent and your kid is more than likely still going to get attracted to that, this validation. And, you know, sometimes it just it takes that level of maturity to understand what's actually real and what's not, but you've kind of got to go, you've got to go through that valley. You've got to go through the fire to come out on the other side and, and realise what's good. But, you know, for a lot of people, it's too late. We, we see this constant stream of media about mental health issues with young people. How do we how do we have strong mental health? Well, human connection is at the basis of that. And if we're allowing kids to have this constant false sense of connection, then we're really doing them a disservice in being able to provide them with an actual sense of connection. And it can be hard as a parent, you know, classic parents, teenagers disagreeing on lots of different things and the 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 connection and the relationship can get stretched. So what are some other things that we can do to actually build a real strong connection for our kids, for our teenagers? Well, you know, other other family members, other people in the community, through sports, through culture, through dance, through swimming, through all those different things. You know, that's why they're so important. Sports is not about just keeping your kids fit and healthy. It's about the connections. It's about building a connection with the coach, with their new friend's parents. It's going to drive them to games. They're real human connections. They're human connections that they're going to actually take into adulthood, into adult life. This connection of a photo of a black wall or a blank screen or a half a face, that's not a real connection. There's nothing that's going to to foster that that real connection that you need as a human being. It's not going to occur. And, oh, man, I just I hate the fact that there's the dopamine hit element to it, which a lot of other social media platforms have, but then this false sense of connection, and that's my real worry. Especially in 2024, like I said at the start of this video, we're moving through 20... We've moved through 2023 with all these changes in in AI technology and, and the ability to be able to it's more than ever it's it's easier to connect with people. I actually I, I made some content earlier in 2023 that I turned all the notifications off on my phone because I was giving too many people too much access. I was giving social media platforms too much access to me. Hey, come and look at this. Hey, come and check this out. Hey, we've got a notification for you. You might be interested in looking at it. So that element of constant distraction, like I said at the start, deceive and distract. They're one of the, the two of the worst things for humanity. Deceive, deception and distraction. They're, they're terrible. And the constant 
distraction through your sense of needing a connection. So you're constantly distracted. Flick, 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 flick. Has someone sent me a message yet? Flick, 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 flick. And I've seen phones. I've seen teenagers' phones where you click on the notifications and there's notifications every two minutes for the past hour. So how do you... How do you separate from that? Like it's so rewarding through the dopamine hit, yet it takes so much away from you. Like how do you get anything done with the constant distraction? Hey, look at me, look at me. It's your phone. Snapchat saying, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. All, all of all the social media platforms, I should say. If you don't cull the notifications, look at me, 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 look at me. That's what social media has been designed to do. And I fear as a parent with young kids and they're going to be a lot older very soon that they're going to fall down that rabbit hole. It's my... I've got other challenges in life with how much control I have over that with my kids, which is a different story. So for me... It's this sense of worry, but there's also a level of of not having the 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 power, for lack of a better term, or the influence that I would like to have over that situation. And that's something I really worry for my kids. So day one, 2024, I'm still hopeful. I think there's gonna be a lot of change this year. There's gonna be a lot of a lot of crazy things happening at the macro level, which will influence the micro level as well. So I'm hopeful, worried, but not to the point of letting it affect me, where it inhibits me. No chance. Yeah, stay strong. Have a great year.